Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the basics of SketchUp. Today, we're going to take a look at one of my favorites, the Move Tool. Let's hop in. Okay, so the Move Tool is available on the default toolbar. It's this four direction arrow right here. Uh, if you click on that, you'll go into the Move, and you'll know your Move because your cursor turns into that same four sided arrow. It is also part of the large tool set. It's right here. It's this this one underneath all the drawing tools, the first one right here. Uh, if you don't have that large toolbar turned on, you can go to View, Tool Palettes on Mac, Toolbars on Window, and turn on Large Tool Set. All right, once that's turned on, uh, there is something that we want to consider when we go to use Move. So right now, I just went straight into Move. Uh, right now, nothing is selected. If I hover over something, you'll see it will light up. And at that point, if I was to click, it would grab onto that and start moving it. I created some things and just put some things on the ground here for us to look at. Uh, I'm going to go back into Select real quick to show you. Right here I have a face made up by four lines. Here I have a face that's been push-pulled, so it's kind of a, a box, but you can see all these pieces are separate. And down here I have that same geometry copied and then made into a group. Because how Move interacts is a little bit different with each of these pieces. So the first thing I was talking about there is move with or without pre-selecting. So if I know I want to move this face, what I could do is I could come pick the face first and then choose move. Once I've done that, I'm now moving and any clicks I make are going to move that face. If I don't have something pre-selected, I'm going to go back to select just click out nowhere to turn everything off and I turn on move. This is where I was saying as I hover over things, they will light up. And if I click on them while I'm on them, so this face right here, I click right now, now I'm moving that. There is a disadvantage to doing that. Um, primarily, you're from two points. What do I mean by that? So when I'm in move, when I the first point I click is the point I'm gonna move from. So I'm gonna go pre-select this face. I'm going to click on move and I'm going to click this corner. That's my front point. I click and release and now the second time I click is my two point. So if I click right here, it's going to move it to this point. I do want to watch the distance down lower right. It's telling me I'm moving it four foot ten and a half. Now I can of course force my length. If I want it to be exactly five foot, I can just type in five foot enter and it will move over exactly five. So you see how pre-selecting is nice because I can pick a point. If I want this to butt up right against the edge here, it's already selected. I could pick this point and drop it right there. Now I know that those are connected. If I try to do that same thing here, let's go turn everything off, click to deselect, go straight to move. All right, I want to move this, but I want to move it by the corner. It's, it's, it's actually impossible to grab this face by the corner without pre-selecting. So just something to be aware of. One of the things you can do without pre-selecting though, is I can do things like grab this line. So as I hover over it, click and release, I'm now moving that line. And see how that stretches the geometry. And I can move that anywhere, and it's just gonna stretch that geometry out. The other thing I can do by not pre-selecting is actually grabbing a point. You cannot pre-select a point. I could come in here, pre-select an edge or a face, face, edge, but what I can't do is I can't pre-select a point. To move a point, I'm just going to go into Move, hover over that point until it turns green, click and release, and now I'm dragging that point around. This is really cool when it comes to uh, 3D geometry because I can do something called folding, where I grab this point and I start moving around and see how that geometry is folding. It's actually creasing itself in order to move where, I, where I'm telling it I want it to move. That happens by moving a point like this uh, in 3D space. You can see right there, I actually have the option, if you watch the modifier keys down at the bottom, um, command will turn auto fold on and off. So if I tap the command key, and that'll, that'll be different on Windows, it's gonna fold and move differently than if I turn that off. So, good stuff. Moving a point is a lot of fun and gets you some cool geometry. One of the things about pre-selecting, I know I'm going back and forth, I wouldn't say that Pre-selecting versus not pre-selecting is better or worse. It's just different. So without pre-selecting, I can do things like move points. By pre-selecting, though, I can grab lots of things. So I could grab all this geometry, then go to move and drag it over here. Another point of pre-selecting 
is inferencing. So if I double click here, that gets the, the face and all the edges, and I say move, if I wanted this to move exactly as high as this cube is, what I could do is pick my from and to point that aren't even connected to this face. So I could say relatively move it from this height to this height. See that? I didn't even have to click on this at all because it was pre-selected when I entered move. All right, so one of the other cool things that I can do, and this is one of my favorite uses of move, is to copy things. So here I have a group. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to move. I'm gonna click my from point right here. I'm gonna start to drag it over here. So as I'm moving along, I'm gonna click on option. That's option on Mac, control on Windows, and look what it does. It puts the original back and now I'm moving a copy. So at this point, I could type in an exact distance if I want, just like with regular move, or I could just pick a point that I wanna place it and click boom, there we go. Now, here's where, that, that's, that's cool enough, right? Oh, I just copied, that's awesome. Watch this. So right now, before I do anything else, I haven't done anything other than placing, I can make multiple copies. If I just come in here right now and I type 3x and hit enter, it makes three copies rather than just the one. And here's the even cooler part, if I wanna change that, I can actually modify that. So I could say 5x, give me five copies. Now let's bring it back down to 2x. As long as I stay in the command, I can keep changing how many I want to put in there. That's cool. It just gets cooler and cooler, right? All right, so I'm gonna do one more move. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna drag a window, click and drag around these four boxes. I'm gonna click on move, rotate a little bit, just orbit over here. I'm gonna click right here at this corner. I'm gonna hit my modifier key to copy, and I'm gonna drag it over this far and click. And now, instead of typing, I typed a number X before, I'm gonna say, divide that span by, so I'm gonna type slash four, enter, and it's gonna make a total of four copies between that first and last copy. I can change that, again, as long as I don't go anywhere else, I can say, well, what does it gonna look like with five copies? Slash five, enter. What about three? Slash three. Enter. What about seven? Slash seven. Ooh, that's getting, what if I say slash 10? Oh, too many, they're overlapping. Back it up. Slash six. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And I can do all of that with just the move command, the modifier key, and a couple of keyboard keystrokes. I think I got it all. There's a lot of stuff you can do with one move command. This is one of the cool things about SketchUp. This is one of the things that I've always liked is you can go in and you can take what it seems like a simple command and with a couple of extra button clicks or keystrokes, you can do so many different things. If you like that, click like down below. That, we know, that way we know we're doing a good job. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you think there's something I should have shown and didn't, uh, if you just want to tell me I did a good job, I'll take that. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see, though. Thank you.